Hello and welcome to another Monday live stream. Get this show on the road here. All right, need to cut some of these down. Hmm, just got to find the stream and share it. <laughs> typical, typical, typical. Hope you're all doing well today. Hey, Anastasia, how you doing? Um, where is my Facebook? Come on, there it is. All right. It's a good thumbnail. Like itching my nose or something. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Okay, almost done. One more thing, and boom. All right, done. Okay. I decided today I'd do another uh, another fun Josh Black um, bust here. I just like doing these, and they're a lot of fun. It's kind of like a, it's almost relaxing for me, <laughs> you know? Just to, just to sculpt out one of these guys. All right. How can I make a relief with shadows? I don't know what you mean, Oberon. Um, from ZBrush to, I don't, yeah, I'm not quite sure what, what you mean by that. If you mean just kind of sculpting on the surface of something, um, yeah, I would just start with a plane and just sculpt what you want. And to go to 3D Studio Max, you might want to decimate it before taking it over there. But other than that, I don't know if I have any specific suggestions for you. Okay. I like this guy, this, um, this concept because it kind of looks like an average guy right like a, a, some guy that you might know oh that'd be kind of fun sculpt him up and i have to give a shout out to Harris Heller. Is that his name? I'm gonna make sure I'm anyway, this is I'm playing Stream Beats uh off of uh Spotify. I really like it. Harris has done a great job. Yeah, Harris Heller. Hey Neil, how you doing? Hey Sneer. How you guys doing? And you know, I noticed you post that uh, the hair hair reference link inside the forum. Thanks for that. I think I, I mean I think it's a good idea, but I also think that every single hair uh, hairstyle is kind of a ch it's like its own puzzle, right? <laughs> so it's like its own every single hairstyle will need its own reference. So it, it is good to have just a generic set of references, though. Like this guy's hair is completely different than somebody else's, you know? Love how tall his head is. Really tall and square in the back. Hey, how's it going? I don't see any Facebookers commenting yet. If, if you're over on Facebook, maybe drop a comment just so I know that it's streaming over there, if you want, wouldn't mind. This kind of sounds like a 70s tune, 70s organ music. Oh, 
Oh, nice, Nier. Thank you so much. Think Tank is a great, it's a great uh, learning establishment. I've, I've had a few of my students also go through Think Tank and they've uh, came out of it with great results. Oh, hey, JC, thanks for, thanks for commenting. Yeah, it's working, okay. All right. Hey, Tasia. Thank you. All right. There is always a bit of a delay on, on Facebook, but... And YouTube. There's about a 20-second delay versus Twitch. I went to Think Tank and just now signed up for your workshop. Oh, nice. Nice. Thank you for, for that. I appreciate it. Yeah, there's and there's no there's no saying that you can't do both, right? You get get your education from all places. You don't have to choose one or the other. There's a lot of my students that will do several different courses. I have to say I really really love this um discovering this move infinite depth brush. I love it. It's just, uh, it's kind of changed, changed things for me a little bit. And all it does is it, it just shoots all the way through the model, almost like a projection. So it moves everything behind it as well as what's on the surface. Are you started? Hey, Cricket, how you doing? Um, I think, are you, are you the Cricket that, um, did the blue guy with the white hair? I felt bad because during during their uh, during the hair feedback, I I accidentally skipped over your model. I, I apologize. I wanted to give you some feedback on that, but hopefully I can get to it. But I, yeah, I've heard I've heard good things about CGMA as well. And there's also like the the 3D character workshop is very very focused on stylized characters. And not only stylized characters, but stylized characters for games and toys. So if you want to learn anything beyond that, then you, uh, I, you're you highly encouraged to look elsewhere, you know, as as well. So, oh, you're not the same cricket. Okay. It was, yeah, it was a different cricket spelled with a C. So <laughs> no worries. Yeah, I was like, oh, crap, I missed that one. Dang it. Okay, let's get some, get some ears in there. Uh, there were a lot of submissions. So if you're wondering what I'm talking about, um, I teach an online course called the 3D Character Workshop. And it's going on four years now um, since I launched it. And I want I wanted to um, I wanted to re-record a lot of the material in a new way. And um I've, I've been doing it live, some new live material. And um, for this, and I've been doing it in challenges. So every single, well, every other week, we've been doing these challenges. And um, it's been a lot of fun. And so last week was the hair and fur challenge. And this one, I even mi mixed it up more and brought a special guest on. Um, his name is Hector Moran. And, uh, had him talk about his workflows and the way he does hair and yeah, it was a lot of fun. I, I really enjoyed it. And next week um, is going to be the clothing challenge. So we're going to talk about wrinkles and armor and all sorts of stuff. So that is coming. So if you're not yet a student, now is a fantastic time to uh, to join us. So you can catch it live because it's not going to be live again. I'm just doing it this one time and recording it. So if you're a new student later on, you have the opportunity to watch the videos back and do the challenges. Uh, can you tell me what sticky mode does in the transpose gizmo? Sticky mode? I... I'm not sure what I that I know what you're talking about. In this gizmo, like what? What sticky mode? Oh, this sticky mode. Sticky mode. Um, 
Oh, that just pins. I don't ever use it, honestly. <laughs> I don't know what sticky mode does. I've never used sticky mode. Maybe some of you guys can pop in and, and, and tell me what the... <laughs> I don't use sticky mode. I use this lock and unlock all the time by holding down my alt key. And that just allows me to move my gizmo independently of my geometry. But as far as sticky mode, I'm not sure. Huh. Uh, let's see. For the mouth shape, are you suggest to make a hole with extrude or make it free with style? I do it differently all the time, Sneer. All the time. Um, sometimes I'll pull it in manually. I'll just take my move brush and just push it in. Sometimes I'll use extrude. Sometimes I'll use live boolean. Yeah. It lets you move everything and then returns the gizmo where it was. Oh, thanks, Ryan. Okay, okay, okay. So essentially, okay, if it's off and I move everything, the gizmo comes with it. Okay, if I turn on this and then I move it, the gizmo pops back to where it was. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Okay. That's what it does. That's why I never use it because I always want my gizmo to come along for the ride. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Why do you begin with three meshes instead of one? It could be used in production for animation or just concept. Um, no, it will not be used for animation. This is, this is my rough block out. I like to work in large primitive shapes first. I don't think about geometry at all until the end, and then I will retopologize this. I'll, I'll draw the topology on the top to make it animation ready if I'm going to animate it. But um, I just like to have the freedom and the, it just gives me an idea of the shapes as I'm working when I, when I have it in multiple pieces like this. And I, the reason I have it um, split between top and bottom because it makes a natural uh, line for the eyes, where the eyes will go. Hey from Vietnam, hey, how are you doing? The feedback session yesterday was amazing. So much info and we also got to see some awesome characters from Hector and Shane and other Disney Infinity people. Oh, awesome, yeah. Thanks for that, Neil. I was wondering if people enjoyed it or not. Okay, well, let's see. Just make a nose. I never see job, see in job openings for stylized modelers. It's mostly CAD, AAA jobs. It depends on where you're looking, Daniel. Um, like I just saw. Um, well, I I've been posting as as the ones that come up. I've been posting them in the in the forum but um if you look on artstation is where i look and um on linkedin if you follow like you have to follow kind of the game studios that do stylized stuff you'll occasionally see them post them looking for work um yeah linkedin is a really good place to look But there, there, there aren't a whole ton of them, you know. They're, but they do come along. Oh yeah, thanks, Nightbot. <laughs> so, uh, Pixelogic announced the ZBrush Summit is going to be virtual again this year which I'm, I'm kind of happy and sad about at the same time. I miss my friends. I really want to see them. Um, but at the same time, I'm glad they're still able to do it. And I'm glad I'm going to be able to participate in some, some form or fashion. Your laptop's broken, so you miss digital sculpting. Oh, dang. Anastasia, thank you. Can 
control drag duplicating oh for the for the pinning yeah i haven't thought about that i don't use that too much so i'll have to think about it oops looks like i messed up symmetry hope you're going to do the sculpt off again it was fun watching you last year thanks yeah the sculpt off is a lot of pressure. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm going to do it again this year. I probably will. It's, it's fun. It's fun. What's well, a little pressure, right? Those hair lessons came at such a perfect time and saved my sculpt. I struggled with hair from my models because it was so stylized, but I think they helped get to where I'm happy with it. Awesome, Ryan. It's good to hear. Hair is hair is a is a beast. It's a very big monster to tackle, <laughs> and it takes a lot of time. Yeah, hair is usually not something you can just kind of throw together really quick, and hopefully it looks good. You know. Okay, adjust this now from the back. It's a little, little too deep there. Hey, James. I'm doing well, thank you. Here. Forgot to turn symmetry back on. So what is this menu you open with all the shortcuts? Um, Balula, that's my own menu that I've created. Um, that you can you can create your own menus inside of ZBrush, to to and just fill it up with anything you want that you use all the time. And um, but my menu, this one right here, it's mainly stuff that I've pulled out of the tool menu over here. And uh, I give this away for free if you want it. It's um, you can go get it over at 3dcharacterworkshop.com, right above my head here. Um, and I also give away my brushes and stuff for free as well. So you can go check that out. Hair and hands. <laughs> Bald character with nubs. <laughs> It's feet for me. I find feet more difficult than hands. Yeah, I, it's, um, again, I think, I think the hardest thing is, um, the hard, the hardest thing with doing anything is just not knowing how to do it in your head, right? So the more reference you have, the better, right? So, so Chris, I'm gonna have to say that no, it's not okay. You're you're essentially stealing from the company, and you're talking on. You're th this is the um, Pixelogic official Pixelogic live streaming channel. So you're asking if you can steal ZBrush on their official channel. So you know, do with that what you will. <laughs> I'm just going to make blob characters and I bet I'd find a way to overcomplicate it. <laughs> yeah. No worries, Chris. We've all been there. Um, so what I recommend you doing instead is getting ZBrush Core Mini, which is free, and then you can, uh, you can play with it. So, um, and and it does it does a lot of stuff and handles a lot of polys and you know and there's also um, monthly subscription options so you don't have to pay the whole thing up front.
yeah, as a as a sculpting app, ZBrush is king. Okay. Now I, I want to go up one level in detail with all of this stuff. So I'm going to add a subdivision and then delete it. That's just going to give me more resolution. <laughs> yeah, yeah, James. Paul's great. Paul is Paul is full of energy, and he doesn't drink caffeine. <laughs> he just naturally that way. Naturally full of energy. All right, I'm going to duplicate this. See here. Yeah, Zebra's core is pretty good as well. So that's kind of the in between. That's the middle, the middle version between Zebra's core and the full version. Give him tall. Eyelids. Yep. Just, um, I would just get Zebra's Core Mini and and you know save up for it. And what's nice is, um, if you get Zebra's Core, the the cost you can put towards the full version of Zebrush when you're ready. So you're going to animate this sculpt. How do you deal with needing large eyeballs, but internally they overlap, but you still need them spherical? Um, I just overlap them in internally and rig them that way. It's possible to rig them when they're overlapped. It's more difficult to do than a regular eyes, but it's possible. And uh, like on Disney Infinity, we did it all the time. He was pretty adamant you should or shouldn't overlap. <laughs> yeah. So, um, it, yeah, it's, it, you can, you can totally overlap just from, from my experience, you can totally overlap and it's fine. It's just, like I said, it's more difficult to rig if it's overlapped, but some characters you just, you can't help it, right? They, they just have large eyeballs just like this guy and they just overlap in this inside the head. Um, if, if you, if you made the eyeballs smaller than this, then the, the curvature of that eye would be too small and the eyes would look like they were bulging out of this guy's head. So that's not what I want. 
So sometimes you just kind of have to, you have to deal. Okay, I'm gonna split this off just so you can move the face without affecting that nose. Yeah, lattice deformer. I've rigged characters with a lattice deformer and they that works really well, especially for cartoony characters where you want the eyes to squash and stretch like uh, like Warner Brothers cartoons, like Daffy Duck and stuff. Um, so yeah, it's it's quite possible. Yeah, you really don't need a high poly count unless you unless you're doing like really high fidelity surface noise or something like that. Like for example, this guy is sitting at a whopping total of 16,000 polys. Hey, thanks Charlie. I think I'm going to make this nostril a separate piece and then join it together later. just so I can get that. I want to get this, the seam in between the nostrils and the nose. Sounds like a plan, Krish. this and let the let this nostril wing make the nostril hole <laughs> Nightbot's on a roll today. Advertising ZBrush Summit Live in October. That seems like so far away, but it's really not. <laughs> Krish, I'm not going to do it in one piece, man. brush yeah it will eventually become one piece but I like to block it out in a few different pieces like this more control is the name of the game I just had trouble while doing remesh by union. The joint parts get messy and some of the parts pop up. Uh, just make sure you have enough density when you do, when you, when you stitch them together. That's usually the biggest problem is there's just not enough uh, polygons to stitch nicely. So make sure you have enough. Um, if I had free reign to license, to any license, who would you like to make as an infinity character? Oh goodness. Well, hmm. You know, I always wanted to do like the older classical characters. Um, you know, the, the ones from the older animated shows. And we did a few, but uh, 
I like we did Baloo and some some of those, but I would love to do like Merlin from um, from Sword in the Stone and even Wart, you know, Merlin Wart or the Owl or something like that. And Robin Hood from Robin Hood would be fantastic. Um, like Alice, there's so many. Okay, I need to. I just wanted to pull this over and fix it here. There we go. Um, for the student streams, any plans for more guests? It was great having Hector on last night. Um, you know, I was thinking about it, um, and I would love to, I have so many friends in the industry that would, that have reached out and, you know, and I've talked to personally that are like, yeah, I would love to do that. So, um, yeah, I need to, I just need to figure out where it would fit, you know. Real tough sculptors do it in one piece. <laughs> uh, I used to do that. I used to do it in one in. I used to model my characters in a single piece. Like I used to be a polygon modeler in Maya for for years. Like I've been in working in games for twenty two years now. And this is kind of a workflow that I developed at the end of working at Disney. So, um, yeah, this is this is just the workflow I enjoy. And if you'd like to to do it as well yourself, feel free. That's why I'm here, and that's why I show you this stuff. Let's see. I'm just I'm trying to decide if I want to do the Dynamesh method on this mouth. I think I might. I like it a lot. You worked on a game that was inspired by the squirrel scene. So what for game jam? Oh, okay. <laughs> nice. I do. I love that squirrel scene. It's so good. Yeah. I worked on Lucky's tale too, a little bit. Um, I made a few of the characters for that game and that was very, that was very like, um, very, it was kind of, you know, inspired by that. Don't feed the trolls. I can't help it, man. <laughs> Sometimes I have to, I have to, def I feel like I have to defend myself in my, the ways I do things. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna stitch this together, I think. Actually, I'm gonna give him a little bit of a chin nub here before I do. Chin nub, that's the official term. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> There we go. Na, 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 na. I think I'm going to make his eyelids kind of go in a little bit. Oops. too too big <laughs> okay 
just leave it at that. But I do want to pull these ears down. Sounds a little uh, Avatar The Last Airbender-y, this music. Can you guys hear it okay? Huh, now that it's over. <laughs> do I have any plans on doing an in-class for the... Th like, you mean in person? I've actually, so I'm toying with the idea of doing an acceleration program, which I would um, bring on more coaches and give more feedback. And then, um, and with that, I've also thought about doing an in-person, like workshop getaway kind of a thing where I would rent out a place and some computers and have people, uh, show up and learn um the only time i've ever done that is at Noman school during the zbrush summit i did a workshop there i've actually done two of them and that was a lot of fun so i would love to do an in person as soon as this uh covid decides to do you know finish up and get done <laughs> but yeah i would love to i'd love to see these people in person but for now i'm just going to do a digital Indeed, I don't think I've heard of Indeed. I think um, Glassdoor is a good one. LinkedIn is a good one. ArtStation. Um, yeah, go. You have to kind of go where the game studios are looking. They used to post um, job offers on CG talk, but I don't know that they do anymore. Um, I have a very hard time sharing anything I do because I think it all sucks. It does any advice on how to get rid of that. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very real thing. It's just called, um, imposter syndrome, right? It's like, wh who am I to be doing this? Who am I to be posting this stuff? Um, the, but yeah, I don't, I don't know what kind of advice I have for getting past it other than, um, cause I, I usually look at places for inspiration, like art station and stuff like that, rather than trying to beat myself up over it, thinking I'd, I'll never be that good. I look at it like, oh, I can't wait until. I'm that good someday and you want to get there, right? But if you're just starting out and you don't think anything is is good enough to post, that's okay. Just keep just keep your own private sketchbooks of characters. You don't have to post your characters if you don't feel they're good enough and just keep practicing and getting better and getting better and one day, hopefully, you'll feel like, "Hey, this one's not too bad. I think I'll I think I'll post it up and see what kind of response I get," you know? But um in my opinion, the fastest way to get better is to get feedback. And, and that's why, um, I have a, not, not to, not to toot my own horn or anything, but that's why I have the 3d character workshop is to give students feedback, um, so they can accelerate quicker. And I'm, that's why I'm saying I want to do an accelerated program to bring even more feedback because yeah, that's how you, that's, that's the fastest way to get better. If you're in. If you're in your office or room all by yourself and you're not getting any feedback, you don't know if you're getting any better or not, you know? <laughs> Would you say I, whenever I watch stream, Shane's like blocking a character, but that block out doesn't look like a block out, looks like a final. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Sometimes it, sometimes I struggle with it looking the way I want it. Let's see. I feel like that nose is still too big. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I'm your workshop, but, but I'm too shy to show anything. I'll find the courage and you're right. Feedback is essential. So that, that kind of pains me a little bit to hear that, um, Rom, because um, the, 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 the uh, forum is exactly where you should be posting your stuff, no matter how bad it is, because it's kind of a safe place. There aren't the trolls in there, you know, you're not going to get like these people saying, you know, go, go learn anatomy or, or laugh at your stuff or any of that kind of crap. You know what I'm saying? So it's, um, it's meant for students that have been in there for a while to lift up and raise the newer students coming in. And because giving feedback is just a, as important as, um, getting feedback. So it's, it's all part of the practice. And if you're not posting anything, it's like, you can't, you can't succeed if you don't try, you know what I mean? Troll free zone. Hey, Chris, how you doing? I had a hard time posting stuff too, as the ZBrush Facebook group really dragged me down. Right? Exactly. And since joining the 3D character workshop, I can see huge improvements in my work. And I'm getting more confident. Jeez, I need to clip that comment. Thank you for that. <laughs> James, I appreciate it. That's exactly what I want to hear. Because, yes, you post. There you go. Sorry, I just clipped your comment. I hope you don't mind. That was awesome. Thank you. But, yeah, that's and that's exactly what you do. You get... <laughs> oh, it drives me crazy. Especially from when you get feedback from people... You know, you get these trolls commenting on your stuff and then you follow, like you go look at their name and go see what kind of art they do. And their art is just as, you know, beginner as what you posted or worse or whatever. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's not good. It's not good. It's not good for anybody. You know, it's really not hard to be nice. It's just not. So that's just a, just a life comment. Not doing anybody any good by being being a jerk. Just because you're anonymous doesn't mean you need to be a jerk. This is a perfect place for this um, move infinite brush. See, I want to get the back of his head even more square than it is. So I want to grab this move infinite brush and I can even turn on accu curve. Yeah, look at that. Blammo. That's the no noise it would make if it made a noise. Blammo. Um, I might be getting an art test soon. I failed it twice. Any advice you can give me? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Daniel. Um, hmm. And you're not going to want to hear this, but that's exactly why I'm creating that accelerator course. So you would have more access to pro coaches that you could maybe, um, like do the art test and put it in front of the coaches before you submitted it. Um, but, um, the advice to get, just, just make sure you're trying to hit what they're trying to ask you to do. So the reason, the whole reason for an art test is to test to see if you're a good fit, a good candidate for what they need, right? They're going to they're going to test you to see if you can do the job, do the work. And if you're test if you're showing that you can't do the work, then that's where they're like, "No, thank you," you know? Um so essentially just all you can do is is try harder to break down exactly like put yourself in their shoes. What are they looking for? What job are they trying to fill? And you want to show them that you can fill that job that you can do what they need you to do. So just be in that mindset. When you do the art test, you, you just be like, okay, what are they looking for? They're looking for this character to fit this game. So I need to make this character look and feel like this game does or whatever, you know? So hopefully that helps. Um, Carlos, this is the move infinite brush. It comes with move infinite depth. It comes with ZBrush. It's a, it's a fairly new brush. But Daniel, keep trying. You'll get there, man. You'll get there. I 
I know it's discouraging. I've been there. It took me a long time to get hired on at Disney. Long time. A lot of that had to do with timing, but a lot of it also had to do with my my abilities weren't quite quite there yet. So I just kept working on it, kept applying. Still shiver in fear of Z model. Um, so that's another great comment, by the way. Um, I gotta, do, I gotta do some second. I'm gonna be so one of the challenges coming up is the is the prop challenge and prop challenge. I'm gonna be going over the Z modeler, so we're gonna be learning that more in depth coming up soon. But um, let's see. Sorry, I'm snagging that comment too. <laughs> Could I send you my art test over Facebook? Um, not over Facebook. You should, well, and I wouldn't post it in the forum either because typically they have NDAs. Um, so NDA is, that's why it's like, it's difficult to post in the forum, but yeah, because you shouldn't. Uh, so Dan, I'll just maybe send it to me directly and I can take a look at it for you. Unless it's too late. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Lower these ears just a little bit more. Okay. This music. Womp, 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 womp. <laughs> Pretty funny. Okay, I think I'm ready to save this. Another Josh guy. Josh guy. Zero, I don't know, nine now. I don't even know what we're up to. Do I have any pointers for self-guided study? You mean like watching YouTube videos and learning it all on your own that way? Uh, can you do almost everything here that you're doing on ZBrush Core? Not really. Um, you can do some of it on ZBrush Core. Uh, some of the things that are missing is like um, Z remesher that I'm gonna do later, but you can you can do like Dynameshing, um, and some Sculptress Pro stuff. You might not be familiar with those words just yet, but those are some of the things that you can do that I'm doing here. Uh, let's see, I highly recommend setting yourself a weekly challenge. And that's what we're doing in the course at the moment to say, yep, head into one. Yeah, give yourself a like a, a, a fake deadline, you know, like uh, give yourself a week to do a thing you know, uh, and focus on that thing a lot. Um, so I would, and that's a really good way to do it. Otherwise you're going to, you know, make up excuses to do other things other than sculpting and it might take you a while. So, um, that's, that's one really good piece of advice is to give yourself your own, you know, some deadlines. Let me pull this down.
Hold on a second. My 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 daughter is texting me. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> she didn't know it was my phone for some reason. All right. Um you need to have artistic education prior to starting 3D. Uh no, but it helps. Um, because there's two sides to the coin when it comes to learning uh, how to do 3D characters. And um, there's the technical side and the artistic side. So if you don't have artistic knowledge, um, then you're going to be learning the artistic side and the technical side at the same time. If you already have artistic tendencies, then it'll be much easier for you to uh, just focus on the technical side of things. But yes, you can learn both at the same time. Just a little, a little more time consuming. Okay. If you're bad at deadlines, then you need deadlines. <laughs> okay, let's see, I'm gonna merge this down. My lids, okay. How do you reset something like the lights? Um, I don't, I don't really mess with the lights in here. I just leave it because this is like a, a digital sculpting app. So, um, it, I just leave them alone. But if you want to mess with the lights, you come up into lights right here, and you can move it around a little bit right here, right here. But I just leave it. I hear a lot of people saying that before you do stylized stuff, you need to dom dominate anatomy to be able to do good choices on what to exaggerate. I think that's a valid take. Mm. Should one invest in learning realistic anatomy, even if the goal is to do stylized art? So that, um, well, that is exactly why I'm doing the challenges that I'm doing in the order that I'm doing them in. So the first challenge is the Saturday morning cartoon challenge to, so you learn how to block stuff out without paying attention to anatomy. Um, kind of like the shark I did last week on the live stream, just something that's just, it's just shapes, right? Just big primitive shapes. And then the second one is, um, the second challenge is stylized anatomy. And I teach you just enough that you, you can make a character with enough anatomy that's believable because that's really the goal is to make a character that has believable anatomy. Does that make sense? So, um, if you're going, if you're going to take it to the next level and make realistic ish characters like Spicer here, Hey Spicer, how you doing, man? So Spicer's another streamer here on, on, uh, Pixelogic live streams. And, and he is, a he is a goat when it comes to uh, anatomy. So if you want to learn even more anatomy than I teach, check out Spicer stuff. So um, good timing there, brother. How you doing? <laughs> anyway, I hope that answers your question. Do do you watch Grey's Anatomy? I don't watch Grey's my, my My family does, but I don't watch. I don't have too much time for TV. I have a, the, a few shows that I watch, and that's about it. So the, the anatomy that I teach, if, if you want to learn more, it's like, it's just enough to help you decide if you want to dive deeper into anatomy or not, you know, like if you want to take a Scott Eaton class or, you know, something like that. Hey Spicer, do you teach much you teach a lot of anatomy in your online course, right? Spicer does an online course as well. Okay. Say this one more time.
can stitch this together. All right, remesh by union, stitch it. Does that work? No. That's why I didn't delete my lower. Okay. There we go. That did it. Okay, so now we're all stitched together. I've been leaving my upper eyelids not stitched lately just because it gives a nice clean uh, separation, especially if it's something like this one where he has big eyelids that are just nice and clean. And then I like to run this tessimate on it just to kind of blood fill it with like this, just to kind of give me a, a just a, a, a space to sculpt in. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. There we go. Now everything's stitched together. I can start working on um, smoothing all the transitions out. You know, if it is currently challenging to get at, in a beginner position internship doing work like this, um, I would say it's quite challenging because a lot of people want to do it. Hey, what's up, Dan? Yeah, a lot of people want to do it. It's kind of a, it's kind of a rock star gig, you know, like it's, it's kind of like uh, wanting to become a musician or something like that. You know, a lot of people are wanting to do it because it's, it's uh, somewhat of a dream job. So you have a lot of people vying for those positions. So you need to make yourself stand out and, you know, it's like, again, like a musician, you want to make sure that you, you are good enough that they want to hire you over someone else. All right, James, take care, man. All right, good luck. You know, James, I would even, honestly, and I know you put in a lot of work on the on that hair, but honestly, you may want to just start over again. And there's nothing to be said about, like, there's, it's, because it, it's all about your progress and your learning, rather than trying to stick with what you have and keep, continue to munge it and munge it and it's not just working. Maybe like take a, take a two steps back, block it out again, and see if you find some happy accidents and some better flow and that kind of stuff, you know. Um, um, you can you can you can continue doing, but or, or you know you can continue going down the path that you're going, but you also might want to try just like hiding that hair and just kind of starting fresh and see if you can figure it out from there. Yep, big shapes. That's the biggest thing. There's no shame in starting over at all. I know it's 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 a it's hard to hear, especially when you put in a whole bunch of time. But just chalk up that as learning time, not as wasted time. Did I do regular modeling? Um, I did regular modeling um, as far as like polygon modeling, but I didn't really do clay sculpture. Yes, I used to be a, as they, they call it in the industry, a point pusher. I used to be a point pusher. I still do occasionally. Just pushing, pushing around vertices. <laughs> Extruding polygons, stitching points. Yes. Because ZBrush has only really been around for um, not not that long. Whoops. And 
and I've been doing this since 1998. That's, <laughs> that's how that's how ancient I am. Not, not sculpting, but um, modeling characters since 1998. I started out in 3D Studio Mac, well, 3D Studio in, in DOS. Remember DOS? <laughs> Any of you guys young enough to remember DOS? I mean, old enough. <laughs> yep, happy accidents. You were born in 98. Yep, that's how old I am. <laughs> right there that's pretty much sums it up how can i drag a specific dr brush into the menu on the bottom um oops turn this off for a second <laughs> playing x-wing and dos yeah so that's just that that's custom user interface. So I'm not going to get into that right now. I just don't have time to get into that. But um, how you do it just really quickly is you open up preferences config and then you turn on enable custom customize and then you can hold down control and alt and drag things around. So um, there is an ask ZBrush. If you type ask ZBrush customize UI, you can learn how to do it that way. Is the move brush on the bottom menu slightly different than the default? No, this is the default move brush. A lot of studios, you will still need to ask for a ZBrush. It's not always given. You'll get access to it. Yeah, it depends. Okay. Smooth this out. Okay, let's do use this chisel brush. It's this one, right? I can never remember. No. Chisel. Why can't I remember? The chisel creature? I started architectural modeling when we were on silicon graphics work. Yep. <laughs> you actually had to model by typing in equations. Holy cow. I wasn't, I didn't, I didn't get into that. So that was actually like Ed Catmull at the University of Utah here in Utah. Oh man. Maybe it's chisel organic. I'll figure it out one of these times. Yep. This is it. Okay. Enemy mouth. Yeah, he actually, so I live in Utah. <laughs> Look what it's doing to this nose. Okay, I need to mask this off here. blurring this mask down when your name is on an algorithm yep the Catmull Clark subdivisions and when you own or when you're the head of Pixar <laughs> uh, let me try this again this takes a couple times so funny to watch Catmull Rom splines yep so many. <laughs> this mouth looks hilarious. It looks like I didn't mask off the back. There we go. Because I went all the way through it. Um, let me check a different mouth. Yeah. <laughs> this is closed. Yeah, this is the one. It's weird how it opens wider the further I pull it out. Kind of wonder if I can start it larger. No. Looks like me. There we go. That's what I want. There we go. 
Okay, that'll work. Yes, Catmull is in Catmull Clark subdivisions. Yep, Ed Catmull. He he essentially pioneered 3D here at the University of Utah before he um, helped found Pixar. Oh, you know what? I didn't have Sculptures Pro turned on, so I stretched out all my polys. Holy cow. <laughs> that dropped a ton. There we go. <laughs> I learned modeling by sketching on graph paper and then typing the coordinates into a text editor for Videoscape on the Amiga. Yes, I used to have an Amiga 500. I love that thing. My first computer was a Commodore 128, which was like the predecessor to the Amiga. And video toaster and all that, all that business. Good times. All right, flat face. Let's give you some arc. Hold on, I'm just going to focus for a second here. That's a question. So I want to, I want to know, like, I have an object with good topology and then export it to ZBrush from Maya. In ZBrush, I have multiple subdivisions of the object, but now I have to change the UVs of that object on the new UVs, I have to bake the normal map. So is there a way you can replace the same mesh with the new UVs of the lowers? I tried with projecting, but the objects have very fine details and it lose. Yeah, so Vanity, I I know the answer, but it's 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 like super long and involved, like really, really involved. Um so, and I don't have time to get into it really. I, I apologize. So what I would do is, um, I, I usually don't do my baking inside of ZBrush. So I would bake my maps in something like Substance Painter. Um, so look into that rather than trying to bake your maps here in ZBrush, because in ZBrush, you can only bake from your high resolution of the single subtool to your low resolution of that same subtool. You can't bake multiple highs to one low. Um, so you have to take it out to uh, a different program, but um, that's, yeah, that's kind of the high version of what, what I can suggest. Yeah, that's a, it's a hugely involved, I don't know where to, where you would go to find the answer to that question. I'm sorry. But usually I don't start, gosh. I don't start with a model in Maya and then bring it in here and then subdivide it and then kick it out with a baked map. That's not, that's not t a typical workflow. Um, that's the way I started doing it when I first started, but it's not really how I do it anymore. Because so, I usually retopologize a sculpted model like this and then put UVs on it and then export it and bake it. What kind of games need ambient occlusion included in the mesh? Um, I would say hand-painted games like World of Warcraft. Otherwise, you use screen space ambient occlusion that's built into the game engine. But I usually, I, I don't know. A lot of games have double, so they'll use 
ambient occlusion baked into the to the game ma maps and then they'll also have screen space ambient occlusion so you can double it up and kind of fake it like you'll see me fake painting ambient occlusion on my character sometimes gradients and stuff because it just enhances Let's see. I've never seen an Amiga. They were not popular in South America at all, but I've seen lots of Amiga demo videos on YouTube. Yeah. Amigas were good. They were good gaming systems as well as like, they had lots of, they were kind of like the max of their day a little bit because they were good for music and good for art, good for video. How do you show the polyframe colors from all the sub tools in real time without the PBR rendering? The... Um, well, in, in ZBrush, it's just vertex painting. So um, I don't have any vertex paint on here right now. It's just white. But as long as you have vertex paint on all the sub tools, they'll all show at the same time. Uh, ZBrush doesn't have PBR stuff. It's just, this is, ZBrush is mainly for digital sculpting, so you don't really get the, the PBR materials until you take your model out. Hey, what's up, Bane? Let's see. The biggest gaming platform. Oh yeah, graphics. Yeah, ambient inclusion is baked in for mobile games for sure. too much. Okay, yeah, Daniel, if I have time, sure. It's it's kind of, it's a little, I'm just telling you right now, it's a bit beyond the scope of the course, the way it's currently set up, but yeah, I could. Oh, his adaptive size turned off. Thanks. I don't think I turned... This is like the only time I haven't turned it off. Holy cow. Thanks, Neil. Jeez, look at that mess. No wonder I'm having issues. <laughs> I've been answering all these questions today and not paying attention to my own workflow. There we go. That'll do. Jeez, no wonder. Thank you, Neil. I was looking out for me. <laughs> okay. Will I give an expression to this model? Yeah, I will. I'll try to make it look like the concept as much as I can. know about this song try the next one <laughs> okay I still I feel like his eyes are a little too big oh come on uh. Oh, 
focal symmetry. You've been, oh, sweet fellow airbrusher. Awesome. Yeah, I've been airbrushing myself. I used to have a company called Br uh, Touch of Air. <laughs> and I used to, I used to airbrush t-shirts at car shows. And do like guitars and motorcycles and leather jackets and all that. So I haven't done it since the 90s. Even did a couple vans, <laughs> RVs. Should we download your free brushes every time ZBrush upgrades to a new version? Uh, not necessarily. They'll they still work with the new version. It's only when I when I actually like add some new stuff. Like right now, I'm playing with this new move infinite brush and I got rid of the um, Z remesher guide brush because I never use it. Um, so when I add new stuff like that, I usually send out an email to my list saying, you know, go download the latest. Um, I'm working on model and sculptress and then question. Should I add details when I'm in Sculptress or should I Z remesh it then transfer details? Uh, it, it depends on how you want to do it. Um, usually I'll add a few details while I'm doing, while I'm in Sculptress and then I'll transfer them later. So you can do both if you want. So you want to move, snap this to the surface of this eye. when you undo something after you um, shrink it like this it only undoes it for that one sub tool that you're on you have to be kind of careful see right now I'm just kind of working through on Sculptus Pro and putting in some of the details and stuff as I work. And then later on, I'll Z remesh this and uh, transfer the details up to that after I subdivide it. So you can do both. And sometimes I'll just leave it in Sculptus Pro mode. I won't Z remesh it. It's rare, but sometimes I'll do that. Okay, let's give this guy some skin color. It's going to be for a game. I'm going to do retopo and rigging later. Okay. Yep. Color shirt should we give him? Maybe like a maybe like a blue, a redhead. Yeah, I could see him as a redhead. Let's give him a green shirt then. Green goes good with red. Or maybe, ah. Uh, Maybe that blue. I was liking that blue. Yeah, let's do this. All right. 
It'll, I'll be giving him a, this collar and stuff later on here in a minute. Hey, what's up, Mike? How you doing, man? I scope and sculptress export to animation master. Animation master. <laughs> Reconfigure the bendies. <laughs> oh, Mike, I miss you, my brother. How you doing, man? <laughs> Upload it to Netscape. You forgot to download from AOL, man. Don't forget that part. How you doing, my friend? Oh, my gosh. Mike May. <laughs> uh, no, Mike's a, Mike's a really good old friend of mine. I don't mean old in the, in the old aspect, but old as in we've been friends for a long time. <laughs> oh, jeez. And old. Dude, I turned 50 this year. Half a century. How have you been? Did he too? Oh, you got me. What's my birthday? Uh, August 25th. You're presenting at QuakeCon this year? Oh, right on. Very cool, man. That's cool. QuakeCon, are they going to do it live? Or virtual? You're behind me by two years down. All right. I said August 25th, right? Um... Yeah, I share a birthday with uh, Sean Connery. <laughs> yeah, live, you did it last year. Oh, live drawing demo, right on. Yeah, if you ever want to see somebody draw like the wind, give give Mike May a follow. Are you still streaming a lot, Mike? <laughs> August 11th and share with Hulk Hogan right on right on brother <laughs> we're getting back to it sweet it's fun to stream man I like it the interaction then it, it feels like I'm not just you know making art in a hole by myself all right let's see uh what else do i want to do i don't think his nose is this pointy but i like it pointy it's fun let's give him some blue So what, Mike, are you still on, um, what game are you working on these days? Are you the same? Hey, Brendan, man, nice. Brendan is another streamer on here. Are you, Brendan, are you on a, any, any kind of particular uh, schedule these days or still kind of whenever you can fit it in Tesso what does that stand for it's some isn't it Skyrim online what how what is this <laughs> What are you talking stop bot? So if it says um, it's coming from Pixel Logic, that's because it's uh, streaming from Restream and then Restream sends out the chat to each stream so everybody can see whatever. So it's not gonna stop, it's not a bot. I think that's what you're saying. I 
it just says restream in front of everybody's name as they're talking. It's kind of annoying. That's kind of how it is. How you been, Brennan? Elder Scrolls Online. Gosh, Elder Scrolls Online. Thank you. Oh, Facebook is restream bot free. I didn't know that. All right. Yeah, I got to fix that nose. It's a little off. Good, good. I'm a little sad we're not going to have the, the, the summit live this year, but, you know, I'd rather everybody be healthy and safe. So, you know, it is what it is. But, man, I'm, I'm, I'm missing it again this year, and it's driving me crazy. It's like my family reunion. <laughs> yep, yep. Like I said in that, that response, we're just going to have to party harder. <laughs> He's got these flary nostrils that I got to add here. Hey, what's up, Jason? Just bend a little bit. That's better, I think. Maybe he's got this kind of beaky thing happening. I don't know. Yeah, if you want to join the live sculpt off. Did you join it last year, Brennan? I think you did, right? There's the link to sign up. Now, that is the bot. If you see it say night bot, that is the bot. LA bot. LA bot. I'm <laughs> very Judd Nelson. Let's see. Yeah, I, I like this guy because he looks like somebody, you know? It's like, oh yeah, I know somebody who looks like that. Like that guy. Mike May, I was thinking a little, it was, he was looking a little Don Siegmiller. <laughs> Just a little. Probably made you crack up. What program? This is uh <laughs> you immediately <laughs> Oh, this is ZBrush. Any sales going on? Um Dan, I don't think I'm going to put it on sale again. Um, unfortunately, in fact, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll be increasing price soon because there's just too much content in there right now. And um, I've, had, I've had issues in, with coupon scalpers. So uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing that anymore. Instead, I'll be adding bonuses and things like that. Yeah, it's really it was really horrible. I cuz I don't really have an affiliate program for my course. That just means, you know, when somebody sells my course, then they get a cut of it. Um, but as part of the host, the course host that I host my course on, they just have that by default. You can turn it on and they, they there's these companies that have these sniffers that'll sniff out those links and they'll sign up to those links without being authorized to. And then they will go grab my coupons whenever I have coupons and and uh, when you go to check out, there's like a, a, a place for a coupon, whether I have one or not. And what do people do? They immediately go search for a coupon code, right? That's, that's what I do anyway. You know, you go search for a coupon code. And then um, you, so you go search for that and then they find my coupon on somebody else's site and then they get the affiliate. And then, so they're, they're trying to ask me for, for payment for that. And I'm just like, uh, no, you're not, you're not an authorized affiliate and you're a coupon scalper. <laughs> Ugh. 
uh, bonuses are not extra. So I've I've uh, I've done my course. I've ba based it on a, how uh, Pixelogic does their business and their their business model, which is um, lifetime access. Buy it once, updates are free forever. And so I have not added any. I have not asked for any more payment after your first, you know, your first payment. I I am thinking about adding. Uh, an advanced course, which is a, an accelerator program, but that's hiring more coaches to come on and give more feedback to students. So that's that's an extra thing on top of the, the course. Yeah, no more coupons. I'm gonna get rid of that little enter coupon here thing. So I'm not gonna be doing that anymore. Yeah, instead I'll, I'll, I'll offer more value. But right now, um, I'm doing weekly challenges live. So if you want to catch them live, I'm not going to do them again after this. I'm recording them live. So if you want to catch them live, now is a fantastic time to join the course. Um, like for example, I've essentially more than doubled the amount of content since the course was released four years ago. I would say tripled or quadrupled it. <laughs> Wouldn't you guys say? I have some students in here. Maybe they can vouch. Okay, I'm gonna get this guy some teeth. I know, right, Brennan? Yeah, four years. It's, it's going on four years, I think. It's like at least three and a half. Almost 2,000 students in there. Dude, if you would ask me, like... <laughs> Because when I was first starting this course, I'm just going to tell you right now, this is a, this is a little, little story time really quick. Um, when I first started the course, um, I was just doing it on the side just for like a, you know, just some, some side money when, when I was working at Disney and some of the other studios. Um, and I was, I just wanted to, um, make a course as like side passive income. That's it. Right. Let me split this off. And I, I, I didn't know how much people would want it. You know, I was just like, yeah, I'll sell a few. It'll be fun. And, uh, and it turned out that people loved it. And, and so I, I just, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so my side business became my full-time business because I made just as much money doing that as I did working at a studio. You know, I do freelance occasionally, but yeah, I, I never would have imagined, never would have imagined that it would have done what it's done. So I'm completely thankful for that and thankful for all you students for trusting in my ability to teach you. And, and now I have students that are actually working in the industry, like for, for Blizzard and Funko and, you know, just, I'm just like, what, what's going on? <laughs> It still feels like a dream sometimes. Thanks, Brandon. I appreciate it, man. How are things going for you? Are you still at Crystal Dynamics? Speaking of which, I still need to grab that Avengers game. I just haven't had time to play many games recently. Going on four years there too? Oh, no way. I can remember when you... <laughs> Holy crap, dude. Time flies. Liz eyes. Okay, I gotta shorten these teeth. They're too tall. I know, I'm a terrible person. I admit it. I want to though. It's definitely double the content. The course is worth every penny. You should more than, than it already is. So I'd get it now if you're interested. Thanks, Neil. I appreciate it. Thanks, Rom. Yeah, Dan, get in there, man. What are you waiting for? <laughs> right, I 
want to make this. Where'd my teeth go? Back here. Mike, that makes me laugh. If you're still here. Um, just talking about, just talking about Sieg Miller. Uh, how often do I stream? Dude, I'm still going every Monday. Every Monday. Because people like these guys, like Dan, they, they, they see me live streaming. They like the way I teach and decide to join the course and basically want more. And m most of my students come from these live streams. So, um, I need to, I need to advertise a little bit more. So yeah, yeah. And Pixelogic is generous enough to allow me to, to pitch my course on here. I don't do it too much. I probably should do it more often, but. Yeah, I try not to overly pitch, <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm more of an artist than a, than a salesperson. This guy's cracking me up. That's how you know it's working is if it starts to crack you up, starts to make you laugh, then you know it's working. That's how I found you in a sea of realistic modeling and sculpting. Awesome. Well, it's good to hear. That's how I found the course, pitching it on here. Yep, Neil. <laughs> I know. I need to give you some kickback, man. <laughs> Yeah, Neil, I, I have to shout out. I, I really appreciate everything you do, man. I think I'm going to give it. I was I was just going to have it be one one set of teeth, like, you know, just the top teeth. But I think I am going to make bottom teeth and... Move these up. One of those. <laughs> That's weird. Oh, because the front's now the back and the back's the front. Okay. That'll have to do. <laughs> yeah, wrong. That's yeah. That's it's like let the and I always I always try and let the student work sell it. You know, like I, I that's all I have to do is like show the student work. Um, I should have it like rolling down there, but here let me show you. I have a I just have an Instagram three D character workshop Instagram. Like check this out. I gotta, I gotta show them off. This is my top row characters. This is all student work from the character workshop. Just insane, insane amounts of skill happening, and it just keeps going and going. I don't even have them all up here. There's so many, so many. So, and I have a few of mine up here too. But yeah, it's a lot of fun. Oh, you can't see it. Gosh dang it. I hate that new fix. Fix it. I'll do it again. All right. Thanks, Chris. Uh, thanks, Neil. Let me just show you. Hold on a second. I got to turn off my this. There you go. Okay. Go to my profile. There you go. Yeah, check this out. I mean, look, I'll just I'll just hop into one. Look at that. What? I know I, I can't take all the credit, of course, but just to know that I played a small part in their career, you know, just, yeah. I And I, that's another thing, Brendan, I wasn't expecting this part of it to come out of it. You know, I was just like, yeah, I'm just gonna make a course and just like put it out there and see what people do with it. But then, you know, I'm just like, you guys did what? So, yeah, crazy. And now this is this is Ian, and now he's a streamer on on Pixelogic as well. He started out as a student of mine, and 
super super cool stuff and it just keeps going yeah really really awesome look at this <laughs> i love it love it love it so if that doesn't sell the course you know what can i say if this is what you want to do in your career there you go yeah awesome stuff okay back to it done with the pitch <laughs> Yeah, Neil. And it's it's funny because you you get out of it what you put into it, right? Like Ian just came in with, you know, hit hit the ground running and it was uh yeah, just did did an amazing job. What level of ZBrush knowledge? Um just it's I take you from beginner all the way to advanced. So it's uh it, like I said, it helps if you have artistic knowledge because that's more difficult to teach. I do teach it, but uh, you'll you'll be faster if you already have artistic knowledge and you just need the technical knowledge. Hey, comics, how you doing? He looks like he's going. Mm. <laughs> oh, I like that better. All right. See, this is why I like keeping the eyelids separate because then I can start to pose him in this kind of expression, this this kind of chillax expression. fun um are your courses sped up like six times that sort of courses that are hard to follow no you know i i'm glad you brought that up captain because um when i first recorded the course i did include a few time lapses where i would explain it and then after i would explain it then i would show you in a time lapse and the reason i did that is because um to me, this is just me as a student, time lapses are boring and it's easy to like change the speed inside of, inside of YouTube. But ever since then, there have been a couple people that are like, hey, I would really like to watch this real time. And I'm like, are you sure? And they're like, yeah. And so from then on, I have not included any time lapses. And I have a full two characters that I go through completely in the course, um, all the way through uh, to substance design. It's actually, uh, Brendan's here. So, um, I take you all the way through texturing and substance painter and Brendan here in the chat. He actually uh, joined up with me for the last bit of training and helps me walk you guys through how to texture and substance painter. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, most of it is real time. So, and a lot of it's, there's some live training, there's live Q and A's, there's yeah, lots of stuff. Wouldn't the eyelids be different and not symmetrical if you're going for an expression? Uh, yes, but I save, I save the expression until the very, very end. Um, or I save, sorry, the asymmetry for the very, very end. I, so I'll push it as far as I can with symmetry and then I'll break the symmetry later. Yeah, sirloin. What about rigging? I do not teach rigging. It is just a character sculpting. Uh, and I teach you how to take it to game character, and I teach you a little bit about how to 3D print as well. Okay. Uh, let's see, I'm just going to give this guy some eyebrows. That really helps. Yeah, and Brendan, thanks for that. I can't thank you enough. That's, uh, you know, uh, we should do it again, man. That was fun. I just did one. You Did you meet Hector at, at Zebra Summit, Hector Moran? He, he just helped me uh, last week um, and we talked about hair because he's really great at making stylized chunky hair. So I brought him on and talked about hair. Yeah, I'll still Z remesh this guy and I can project the details if I want. Uh, I think I'm gonna leave that that bit out. I think I made it too detailed. Let me 
Let's go like this instead. That's better. You don't need that much detail. Okay, hold on a second. Um, split. Realistic game resolution hair is the bane of my existence. You know, I do have to say, I, I don't teach hair cards in my course. And I've only done two two hair card game characters. And you're right, man. It's like, that's leave that stuff for the birds. <laughs> Sorry, Brandon. <laughs> but, oh, gosh. Oh, I have the crazy cursor back. Thank you. Okay, boom. There we go. I was super afraid of the weird ZBrush interface when I joined. I could sculpt a sphere to save my life today. I love working on it and can do things. So you don't be afraid if you don't know a lot. The workshop is super beginner friendly. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks for all these quotes. Jeez. Sorry, I'm stealing, I'm stealing your quotes. <laughs> I don't get a lot of too many quotes. Okay. Let's see. You're talking about George James? Yeah. I don't want to talk too much about that because we're in, you know, this is Pixelogic's live stream, but. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Very much so. Lunch break is over. All right, dude. Well, thanks for hanging out with me. Let's do it again. Okay, let's add some thickness to this. Not Dynamesh. Gosh dang it. Dynamic. They're so close over here. What? Who put these in? Over? <laughs> that was me. I did it. All right. Uh, thickness. You know, I actually found a really cool way to get quotes. Um, and, that, and that's a great way too, James. But um, so when I put those images out on my Instagram, I will reach out to that, that student and say, hey, I'm going to spotlight you on my Instagram. Is there anything nice you would like to say about the course? And usually I'll get these awesome quotes back and I, I put them up with the images. And I have done a couple surveys in the past that have worked pretty good. Okay. Let's give him some red. Not double, still. Jeez. <laughs> there we go. This guy is cracking me up. Okay. Um, which software packages are needed to make the most of your course? Well, right now, I would say 90% of the course is ZBrush. So to start out, all you need is ZBrush. That's it. Um, if you're wanting to get into, um, into making game characters, then there's other ones that you can get into. Um, and it's up to you how much, which ones you want to get. Um, stuff like Maya or 3D Code or... Um, like Substance Painter. And I just use them for very, very specific purposes. Um, but I do all of the, the character sculpting in ZBrush. Marmoset Toolbags one for baking and presentation. But I would not buy those until you're ready to use them. There's no reason. Uh, 
Okay. Well, thanks, Neil. Yeah, I also have a testimonial place inside the course if you if you want to leave a comment in there. Not many people click on those links off to the side, though, Neil, for some reason. Um, uh, Abram, I, oh, I use it for retopology and UVs, and that's it. But, um, since this is the pixel logic live stream, I like to keep the, keep the chat on, on ZBrush, if, if that makes sense. <laughs> make those even more bold I think he'll really look like this guy once I get those glasses on him and that little that little goat whatever that is Fu man chew thing what's this music doing all right I think I want to cut this in more Showing the teeth, though. All right. Da, 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 da. I'm going to give him that little goat thing. Yeah, no rush. Split this off. This little thing's funny. I need to make it smaller though. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, Cricket. I appreciate it. You want to get the little. What is that little thing called? That little guy. <laughs> Nostril Valley. <laughs> Welcome to Nostril Valley. These are solid, right? Yeah. Well, I don't want to sculpt just pro these. I just want to smooth that edge a little bit. It's a little too sharp. Not the biggest fan of drum and bass. constant like boom, makes my head hurt
see if we can find something else. And we're almost done with this. Well, done with the stream. <clears throat> Last thing I want to do before we go is just kind of give him some eyelashes. <clears throat> Yes, boys have eyelashes too. It's really an easy way to make a character look feminine by adding eyelashes and then, you know, making them look like female eyelashes. But it's really nice to be able to outline eyes as well. Split. Get them into place and then <laughs> thanks Charlie, I, re I appreciate it. Remind me of the what keystoke is to clean the edges off the topology once you lay it. Oh, you just hold alt down and just uh, stroke across the model. They'll go away. Thanks, Charlie. I appreciate it. Huh. Skin colored eyelashes. What do you think? I want to shape them more like this. <laughs> that's that's the answer. Ack. Gross. <laughs> New trend. <laughs> Look like an albino. There we go. I just like eyelashes because they kind of set the eyes, you know. Makes them look like it's either hand drawn or, you know, it has that stroked, stroked line look across the top of the eye. And then finally, we can just like. <laughs> It's always funny to put these in. It's like Fred Flintstone a little bit. How many busts are too many for a portfolio? Only partially, partially serious question. Um, well. I always tell people that the the whole reason behind a portfolio, and you'll notice that I don't have very many busts in my portfolio. Um, I don't even think I have any. Maybe um, not that I don't want to put them in there. But the whole the whole point of a portfolio is to show a, a potential employer that you can do the work that they need you to do. That's it. So if it serves that purpose, then put them in. If it doesn't, then don't. That's pretty much the biggest thing you want to you want to do. So, if you're going to be making bus for a client, then put them in there. You know, if that's what you want to do. I don't know many studios that need bus done, but there are they're out there. Um, or just to show that you can make faces in general. Put those in there. But. Uh, yeah, that's that's the question you need to ask yourself when you're putting your portfolio together. Does this serve the purpose of showing that I can do the work that people need me to do? That's it. Got 
this music. Da down, 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 da down. Thanks, Ozzy. Appreciate it. All right. I'm always. I've kind of gotten past it now, but every time I start a new sculpt, I always wonder where I'm going to be in two hours. Like where, where is this going to be? You know, sometimes I can make, I can go all, you know, take it all the way. Sometimes not quite. Like, of course, this guy still needs his hair. Um, and then I need to detail out his shirt because he's got a hump back. Um, rom, rom, yeah, it's, I've been having music the past little while. Some people like it. But I don't like this song too much because I have to pick from I have to pick from music that is uh, that I can use that has no license. I just turned it off. It's probably not loud enough. Not a huge fan of music, but or <laughs> not a huge fan of music during my streams. I like to listen to it personally, but the music I like to listen to I can't play because I'll get shut down or uh, Twitch or YouTube will mute parts of my live stream. Okay, guys, I think this is where I'm gonna end it. I'm pretty happy with where he ended up. So one more thing I wanna turn on is the AO and the preview render. I like when intensity a little bit, there we go. Just a little subtle, subtle shadows. So, yep. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I, I appreciate it. It's always fun. It always makes my Monday. So, <laughs> all right, you guys. Um, yeah, it looks like I need to like adjust this outer three quarters. I'm making it. I need to just kind of straighten them up a little bit. But um, yeah, thanks for hanging out. And as always, I give away my user interface and my brushes. Oh, that's one thing is <laughs> I had two. I don't I don't know if you noticed this or not, Neil, but I had two overlays, one from ZBrush 2020, and that was showing down below me here and covering my brushes and then one above. And I, I just didn't realize I needed to turn that old one off. I had the new one on. So now I, I realized I had to turn it off. That's why it fits now. So we're good. But anyway, all those brushes down over there, those brushes, um, I give those away for free over on my website, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can go get them and my in interface and my custom menu, that kind of stuff. So, and like I said, now's a perfect time to join the 3D Character Workshop. I'm doing live streams every single week right now. Um, and when I'm done, I'm done. I'm not gonna be doing any more live streams that way. I'll do some Q and A still, but um, anyway, guys, it's a, it's a great time to join. I'd love to see you in there. And thanks for hanging out with me today. We'll see you next Monday for another sculpt. All right. Take care, my friends. We'll see ya. Have a great one.